Okay, so what's up guys? In this video, I thought I'd cover clocking because um, based on Facebook, feedback and feedback from here on YouTube, a lot of people, um, well, a few people actually, said that, you know, the clocking system of the Psalm D21, you know, it's not very intuitive. It's very complex, very abstract. And I must agree, um, coming from a PIC or an AVR or an Arduino, background or even something like an stm32 that has the nice you know graphical gooey type of configuration system it's very difficult to understand the clock system on the psalm d21 so i thought i'd make this video to really explain the clocking system of the psalm d21 microcontroller there's a lot of information available on the clocking system for this device so we'll have to rely on the data sheet to do the explanation. So here we have the data sheet for the clock system of the device. So what you need to understand is that for the SAMD21, this clock distribution system, it's organized into different sections. And we'll go through each section one by one and explain exactly what's happening here. So firstly, the input to this device can be from one of seven clock sources. These first two here are actually external clocks, external oscillators. This one really is for your external crystals and stuff like that. And this one is for an external 32 uh, kilohertz oscillator. So this one actually is uh high frequency oscillation input so you can use you know a regular quartz crystal at something on like one megahertz I, I believe it was up to like 32 32 megahertz this one here actually expects a 32.768 kilohertz you know the, the watch crystals those little cylindrical crystals that are ubiquitous um these three here actually internal oscillators this one in particular is a 32.768 kilohertz internal oscillator that runs at at a high um, a high degree of accuracy this one here is also a 32.768 kilohertz crystal but it runs with a little more better power efficiency so if you're looking to maximize power savings this is the this is the oscillator I want to use. The third one, this OSC 8M here, this one is an 8 megahertz internal oscillator. Now, these, these DFLL and FDPLL actually, um, is, this one is a, it's called a digital frequency lock loop. And this one is actually a fractional digital phase lock loop so i'm sure if you have dealt with microcontrollers before you must have heard about phase lock loop and um you know you don't really hear as much about frequency lock loop but to see what a frequency lock loop does is that is allows you to match uh the control frequency with the controlling frequency so Although the phases from those two frequencies may be anywhere from, you know, in phase to 180 out of phase, you know, the frequency locking allows you to, you know, vary like one frequency to match the other. So you get a little bit of phase um, drift when you use uh, this frequency lock loop, but you know, phase lock looping is a little more precise. Um, the way you do the phase comparison, when you are doing a phase lock loop, there's not as much error. So, yeah, these are the um, seven, you know, clocks that you have as inputs. It can be from an external source, an internal source, or, um, you know, phase lock or frequency lock loop system. Now, this is the important part. After you have your input sources, what you do is you go to what are known as the generic 
clock generators or G clocks. So there are nine um, generic clock generator zero, generic clock generator one, up to this X is up to nine. And what these generic um, clock generators do is that they take an input from one of these sources you have here. And what these can do is they can actually drive one of these uh, clock multiplexers here, or they can, you know, be output to like an, um, I'm not seeing it here, but you can actually view the output of these on an output pin. And that's very important because you see, especially if you're having a lot of trouble with configuring the clocks, sometimes it helps to, you know, hook up an oscilloscope on a pin and actually see what is happening with these generic clock generators. So, you know, these clock, besides an output pin, you can also go to these, uh, these multiplexers. So, you know, these multiplexers, um, I used to really provide a clock for, you know, varying peripherals within, within the microcontroller itself. So, Another important thing to pay attention to here is this generic clock main. This G clock main is actually main, the main system clock. And you know, this main system clock, this is really what drives, you know, a CPU and, you know, your, your bus and all the stuff like that. This is actually called a synchronous clock. And, you know, these generic clocks here, these are asynchronous clocks. Now I want to take a little bit of time to talk about this AHB and APB system clocks. You know, if you're working with, with ARM Cortex parts at, or any um any ARM-based devices, you're sure to come across this AHB and APB um system clock. On ARM devices, you actually have two clocks. You have this AHB, which is the advanced high performance bus and you have the APB which is the advanced peripheral bus so this AHB is a high performance bus and um, you can do things like really designed for you know like interfacing memory to the CPU you know direct memory access you know really high performance pitch shifting kind of stuff and the this peripheral bus you know it's similar but it's more designed for like low um lower power consumption so the ahp bus you know it's very fast i think it's it's almost two times as fast than this apb so whereas you know an, an ahp bus will take like probably uh one one clock cycle to really access peripherals you know your apb bus will take around two clock cycles you know I, I could spend all day here talking about clocks and you know the um high performance bus and peripheral bus and generic clocks and all that stuff but uh you know i think i think we should look at, at the code to understand exactly how we control the actual clock on the device let's go back to the code and we'll see what it looks like so one of the big issue everyone had was running this stuff at um running this microcontroller at like 48 megahertz you know so i mean if you're going to use microcontrollers you might as well run them at full speed so i can understand why you know everyone will feel the need to um run it at at 48 48 megs so this is really taken from um you know microchip technology you know good guys um this example taken from them and you know they they use also the um step system for doing stuff which is a system i prefer when you're really doing anything any peripheral whether it be clocks or spy or i squared c or anything you really want to be you know following this kind of step system where you take stuff in incremental steps so you can really zoom in on everything and get everything running as best as possible so these are the um, nine steps we use so at reset what happens is that you know we have used the this internal um, clock source 
you know being enabled and you know it divides by eight so we actually take a one megahertz uh clock output and then that now is used by the generic clock generator zero you know and then we use this our um, internal 32.768 crystal oscillator and you know all our jazz and you know the microcontroller that we set and when you want to run at 48 megahertz you know you have to switch over to that 48 megahertz clock and there are a series of steps that you must take to be able to do this so the first thing you want to do is set the weight state for 48 megahertz so this is a very important step and if we look at the data sheet for the non-volatile memory controller and we look at this um, non-volatile memory read weight state this rws register we'll see that we can use this register to actually control the number of weight states so when we set it to one you know we get one weight state and we can set up to 15 for 15 weight states you know when it's initialized it's actually at at zero weight states and we need to change this value because you have to remember that the uh the on chip flash memory does not run at 48 megahertz so you need to insert this weight state into the flash memory read because the, the memory actually does not run at 48 megahertz so even if you configure everything else you know good and, and if you, you skip this step uh you wouldn't get the operation that that you really needed to, to get so uh, back to the code um you know since we're using an external you know we'll be using the external 32.768 kilohertz oscillator you know this will be used as you know the digital you know frequency lock loop from 48 megahertz operation we need to tell the microcontroller that we're doing that so this section of code what that does is it configures the external onboard oscillator so that we'll know that that's what we're using as a reference for generating the 48 megahertz when we are done, um, we write these settings using system control register into that control register for the external 72 point, uh, sorry, 32.768 external oscillator. Then we enable it. And after we enable it, what we do is we allow the oscillator to stabilize a little bit. It's not just, it's not just for um you know oscillators but as we you'll see as you go deeper in the series um a lot of these peripherals you need to give them time to stabilize you know because if you don't give them time to stabilize you won't get the proper operation that you need then what we do is we take this um this external 32-bit crystal and we actually take it and we put it as the clock source for clock generator one um you know and then after after we do that what we do is we um take this generic clock generator one and set it as a clock source for the generic clock multiplexer zero so i don't know if you remember um in our data sheet you know we have our input you know we, we configure our external clock source then we input that into our generic clock generator and then you know then we set it, you know, as a source for the, the multiplexer. So, you know, you have an input, then you put a generator, and then, you know, to a multiplexer. So, what we are doing in the code is we're actually stepping through each of these steps. And, I mean, if you look at the sheet, you'll see that, um, you know, that generic clock multiplexer zero, that is actually the um, reference for the digital frequency arm um, lock loop you know for the 48 for 48 megahertz operation so you know if you look at the, the diagram you can see that we need to use this clock multiplexer zero to actually generate you know the uh, the reference that we need for the you know the 48 megahertz frequency lock loop um 
option within the clock distribution system you know and then afterward we enable this digital frequency lock loop clock and um you know then we switch the generic clock generator zero to this um digital frequency lock loop 48 megahertz clock so that the cpu will actually run at 48 megahertz and um another important step is you remember i was explaining to you that we can actually view this um generic clock output and so what we do here is we configure it so that we'll be able to view the output of this generic clock generator on pin a28 you know pa28 so if we actually um hook up the oscilloscope probe to pin pa28 you'll actually be able to see the uh the 48 megahertz being output on that pin um we also do some configuration to produce the 8 megahertz output and you know later on when we're doing stuff like like pulse width modulation and using timers you know we'll actually be using this um this 8 megahertz output and we configure it to actually produce this 8 megahertz output and we set this 8 megahertz output as the um, source of clock generator tree and um you know finally you know we set the um cpu and the advanced referral bus clocks to 48 megahertz now i really kind of i really kind of skip through all the stuff here i mean because we're already hitting close to 20 minutes and it can really be a boring um really boring thing to go through because a lot of people i doubt they'll even look this far but if you look this far thank you um it really helps but you know now you get the gist the gist of what what happens um in configuring the clock so you know if you see a lot of code out there and, and it just doesn't work um but you know with, with with this code here you'll actually be able to um run the device at the full 48 megahertz without any problems so thanks for watching guys be sure to like share and subscribe i have a lot more videos coming up hopefully i, I they won't be as long i tried i really wanted to, to limit my videos to around 10 minutes but um you know there's just so much to explain so much detail you can go into with this stuff but i'll try my best to keep it under 10 minutes and you know be sure to like share and subscribe and i'll link the code um below so that you'll be able to go on github and actually use this as a template for your own projects so thanks for watching